Sorting algorithms give us an opportunity to apply what we've learned about the analysis of algorithms, together with the writing of template functions, as well as an opportunity to review recursion and STL abstractions like iterators. That's a lot of ground to cover. We will look at the venerable but terrible bubble sort, the somewhat better insertion sort, the simple but performant merge sort, the ubiquitous quick sort, and a couple of special purpose sorting algorithms. First, some ground rules. We're going to start by looking at arrays of integers that need to be sorted into a non-decreasing order. In class, we'll work more generally with templates that accept any movable or copyable data type, that is, something with a move or copy constructor. Our templates will also accept comparator functions as parameters, so that we can sort by whatever criteria we like. Increasing value, decreasing value, increasing length of a student object name, etc. Finally, we will use iterators rather than arrays to be as general as possible. To get the basic idea of these sorting algorithms, however, this video will show arrays of integers. The first sorting algorithm you saw in Engineering 1 was the bubble sort. This algorithm takes multiple linear passes through an array, comparing consecutive elements and swapping them if they're out of order. This has the effect of causing the largest number to bubble up through the array until it reaches the end. The algorithm then repeats, causing the second largest element to bubble up and so on. For an n element array, up to n minus 1 passes may be required, though the algorithm can exit early if a pass doesn't do any swaps. This indicates that the array is already sorted. The ith pass through the array will perform n minus i minus 1 comparisons and up to the same number of swaps. So, the overall number of operations, in the worst case, is n minus 1 times a constant times n minus i minus 1, which simplifies asymptotically to n squared. Thus, the bubble sort is a quadratic algorithm. Sorting twice as much data will cost you something like four times as much computation. Question. If the worst case of the bubble sort's runtime is quadratic, what is the best case runtime? Insertion sort is another simple algorithm that guarantees progressively larger subsets of a sequence have been sorted. Like the bubble sort, it propagates elements to the place they belong within the already sorted portion of the sequence. Unlike the bubble sort, however, it does this more directly, with an insert-like operation, instead of a series of swaps. Still, as an algorithm with order n passes, each of which performs order n operations, this is another quadratic sort. The constant value c may be lower, but it's still a big O n squared algorithm. The merge sort is more sophisticated. It's an example of a recursive sorting algorithm. At first glance, it appears to perform more work than the simple bubble or insertion sort algorithms, but its asymptotic performance is categorically superior. The merge sort takes two already sorted sequences and merges them together into a larger sorted sequence. It is defined recursively. We can sort a sequence of length n if we are given two sorted subsequences of length n over 2. The base case is when n equals 1. Such a sequence is trivially already sorted. The process of merging two subsequences together is linear. The algorithm needs to track the next element in each sorted subsequence and choose the smaller one to add to the larger sequence. This takes order n operations. We will analyze the overall runtime complexity of the merge sort in class because it's a really neat example of recursion in both the algorithm and the analysis. In practice, owing to high constant factors in the merge sort, some implementations use an insertion sort on small initial arrays and then use the merge sort to combine them. That's enough to get started with for now. We'll cover more sorting algorithms in the next video.